mean creating the conditions where people can build businesses, do new innovative stuff so that people can get more variety and more dollars per hour of work. Um, the second thing is, you know, this used to be a great place to bring up kids. Now it's not safe to run a dairy or a jewellery store, so, so that's got to change. And then there's this vexed issue of the treaty, which in a way is making it harder to solve all other problems. And I accept people who say, well, you know, we don't want to have this debate because there's some nasty people out there. I agree with that. But I also believe that if we don't have an open, healthy, honest discussion about does the treaty divide us into two sets of people with different rights, as say Willie Jackson would claim, or does it actually give us natikanga katoa rite tahi? And I say that in Māori because that's what the treaty says and it shows that we're here to include all sides of the debate around what it really says. The same rights and duties, that's a magnificent foundation for a country and one that I think we need to celebrate. So not sure about that debate. Um, Lots of people uh, saying lots of things. Uh, I guess that's just politics. But here at X, uh, we believe there's challenges to overcome, and we want to be uh, a constructive part of an ACT national coalition overcoming those challenges for New Zealand. Well, being a constructive part of a national coalition under MMP, that can mean working with a number of different parties. Under MMP, is it wise to rule out working with any party? Well, I think, first of all, I mean, there's, there's obviously parties that uh, you just have nothing in common with. But, you know, I, I think the message for people who are saying, look, I, I want to change this government, how do I best do it? Um, Act and National are now saying mirror image things that while we have different priorities and mainly Act wanting to go a bit faster and a bit harder on a lot of things, basically we're both saying our strong preference is to work with the other uh, and that means that you can give your party vote to Act and know that you're contributing to not just changing the government but making that change real, powered by the kind of ideas that Act brings to the table, releasing policy on an almost daily basis at the moment. Yeah you are. Our inbox is flooded, it's great, it's good and succinct, there's some snappy one-liners. but. I mean, I, I suppose it, it calls me up for being a, a bit of a hypocrite because I want I want to see some change. I get sick and tired of seeing New Zealanders who are working for low or middle income wage not being able to have the dignity of work and, and looking after their families, being able to afford a, a home for themselves and their families. And then you say, right, well, if drug addicts don't aren't in rehab or in work, then they're off the benefit. And I think, ah, no, not that far. Mm. And every time you mention anything about the treaty, the, the the ugliness that it whips up is just horrific, and that's not what New Zealand used to be like either. Yeah, look, I totally agree. So first of all, on you know drug addicts and beneficiaries, and um, we were talking off here uh, last time you talked to me about this. Um, I left the impression that you know if you didn't fulfil these criteria, then you'd go off the benefit completely. Um, Thank you for the opportunity just to be clear that under X policy you never end up with no money. However, um, if you don't if, so, uh, meet your obligations uh, under X policy you can end up with electronic income management. That's a plastic card that pays your rent first, then your groceries, then your utilities uh, and comes with financial counselling. Now there will be people who say well what about freedom? No problem. Uh, get a job but you won't go hungry, you won't be homeless, you won't starve um, but you also won't have the ability to direct your spending as cash like people who work for it do. And by the way, that only happens um, if you've been abusing welfare for more than a year. But that's the kind of consequence that I think we need to find a balance between, you know, my right, my money, and also people who actually work, earn money and pay taxes have some rights in this Okay, in this well that wasn't too. mentioned at all about the electronic management. Yeah, no, that's that, that's fair. So I appreciate yeah, the okay, opportunity cool. to clarify um, but the other thing is, where are these mythical rehab counsellors going to come from? Mm. I mean, people who are even wanting to go private and pay through the nose mm. are waiting, you know, six months to a year to see a counsellor for, for children who are in desperate need. Yeah, and I agree that there's a real problem, and I think the current government's run into it. They said that they were going to fix mental health. They poured, you know, extra yeah, two billion bucks, and, oh. and and basically they didn't get any extra people. Uh, so you're right that that is a problem. But bear in mind, the policy we propose is if you refuse, so you can't refuse something that isn't there. What we're saying is, to the extent that there are people available, you have to take the help that's offered to you. Now, then you get to the separate problem of how does New Zealand attract and retain and train uh, more medical professionals. Uh, there's a bunch of areas that where I think we need to do better. 
Uh, basically, I think, first of all, it's important that we fix the economy. The more productive we, we are, the higher wages we have, the more taxes we can afford to pay, the better public services we get. Now, that, that's not a cop-out. That's reality. If we don't really pin our ears back and say we're going for broke to be a first world country, Every economic policy is measured against the productivity lens, which is one of the things Zach's been saying for a while now. Then all of these choices become harder. Then you look at medical licensing. You know, I, in our view, there's too many people who are capable of doing the job, are doing the job in other countries, and actually get kicked out of New Zealand, unable to practice. Now, I agree that whether it's psychologists, psychiatrists, doctors, you know, nurses, dentists. They should be governing their own profession, but those professional bodies, all those different councils, uh, they don't have an incentive to increase the supply of people when there's a shortage to treat the patients. So uh, we'd do a little bit of work there. Um, and then I think finally, uh, you've got to be prepared to start contracting people who are more productive, get stuff done faster and better. And that's where our whole mental health policy, Mental Health Addictions New Zealand, is to have somebody who's the funder, who doesn't provide any services themselves, and they're just a hard-nosed, data-driven, which of these providers actually work. Uh, and if they do, if Mike King comes along with Gumboot Friday and he gets results and people that go through his service, you know, end up not needing more help and get a job and don't go to jail, then we say, hey, look, that, that, that was what money well spent. Uh, someone else, maybe they don't succeed. Um, then we say, okay, we're going to redirect the money where it does work. So it's about relentlessly improving productivity in all areas, including counselling. I'm getting loads of questions here through the text machine, but I want to hear your voices, 0800 80 10 80, relating to Acts policy, relating to election issues. How big a mess are we in? I mean, big enough mess that you revised your budget. Yeah. We're in a mess, right? Look, Grant Robertson has spent it all. I mean, we've gone uh, from almost no debt uh, to $200 billion of debt. Productivity growth has been flatlining. Uh, we're forecast to be the second to last uh, country in the world for economic growth. Um, we, uh, I mean, you, you go through it. Uh, there's no question that there are serious problems. But I also think we're at a stage where we need a bit of hope. So what can we do about it? Well, first of all, we've got to be relentless on ending government waste. And I would just say in government, here's a simple question. If we weren't doing this thing, if we didn't have this government department or this policy or this government worker, uh, would we start them or establish them or hire them tomorrow? And if you couldn't independently justify starting up tomorrow uh, what you are doing today, then maybe it's time to stop. And if we start with that basic attitude that we are only doing what, as Peter Blake said, will make the boat go faster, that's how you get more productivity because look, businesses and households have been doing more with less for the last six years. Mm. Time government started doing that too. Second of all, red tape and regulation. You know, I don't care if it's finance, you look at the AML FATCA uh, regulations, the triple CFA. If it's farming, they're facing an avalanche. Early childhood education, 303 regulations they have to comply with before they bring the first kid in the door. Um, we've got to get really hard nosed on red tape and regulation because people are finding they're spending more of their time on productive, sorry, on compliance activity. Yeah. And that means less time on productive activities, yeah. making us poorer. And then you get on to infrastructure. I know you're going to cut me off if I keep going, but, I am but, we, but we, there, we there needs to be some hope by here. The taxpayer. <laughs> we, have to make a, we have to make a living. We wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> News Talk ZV, it is 10.16. Never miss a beat. Stream your favourite stations and podcasts on the free iHeartRadio app and on your smart speaker. There's nothing quite like having your favourite magazine in your hands. Get two months free when you subscribe to one of your favourite magazine brands with MagShop's Super Spring Sale. That means you'll save over 60% on some of New Zealand's most loved magazine titles, including The Listener, Your Home and Garden, New Zealand Women's Weekly and more. Don't miss out on two months free subscriptions. Terms and conditions apply. Subscribe today at magshop.co.nz. Over 60 and get urinary tract infections? Optimal Clinical Trials are researching a potential treatment for bloodstream infections caused by E. coli bacteria and are looking for people with a history of UTIs to take part. Although these infections can affect all ages, people aged 60 or over with recurring UTIs are more at risk. Volunteers are compensated for their participation and for travel to one of our Auckland clinics. To learn more, visit OptimalClinicalTrials.com or call 0800 737327. Hello, I'm Steve from Allied Exteriors. Do you have a plaster home that is due for maintenance? 
If you want to preserve the value in your precious asset or are intending to sell, Allied Exteriors can help you. Whether you need a repaint, plaster repairs or a full plaster system refurbishment, we have a range of options for you to consider. Maximise the value in your plaster home and keep it looking great with quality maintenance. Go to alliedexteriors.co.nz What's the best way to transport your tools and animal feed around your lifestyle block? The best option is EasyGo electric golf carts, designed specifically for lifestyle blocks. EasyGo electric golf carts feature advanced options like seating for up to six passengers, lifting decks and tow bars. Shop online now for your EasyGo electric golf carts. The Agenda is NZ's number one weekly sports podcast. On the latest episode of the ACC's Agenda podcast, join myself, G-Lane, Matt Heath and Manaya Stewart as we discuss Ian Foster's victory speech at Rugby World Cup 2023. We reveal what it's going to be. Plus, Ryan Fox reveals the text messages he received from his mates post-victory. They're quite abusive. Listen now on iHeartRadio or wherever you get your podcasts. It's been a rocky start for our All Blacks in France. From 29, All Blacks 13, All Blacks win 71-3 over Namibia. Can they get things back on track? Listen to News Talk ZB, Saturday from 8am, for live commentary of All Blacks v Italy. With our voice of rugby, Elliot Smith. Losing in Lyon is not an option. Rugby World Cup 2023, All Blacks v Italy. Saturday from 8am with Access Solutions on iHeartRadio and News Talk ZB. Official radio broadcaster of Rugby World Cup 2023. News Talk ZB 1019, David Seymour, ACT Party leader, is in studio. We, the uh, tax rates had to be pulled back. The retirement age, at you know the age at which it was raised, had to be brought in sooner once you saw the state of the books in Prefu. So, you know, I'm 58, how would I go? Yeah, look, it, it's not always a vote winner being honest, but I think mm. that's what New Zealand needs right now. Yeah. Um, and our view is, look, first of all, we would give very small tax cuts that's all that can be afforded if we want to start paying down debt and also stopping running deficits that are causing inflation we've also got to work out how you deal with expenditure now um, it's a fact that in every western country people are living much longer yeah you know i meet people that are 65 now and i think man you know once upon a time 65 was old you know now they're off to zumba class yeah Um, (laughs) it's true yeah Um, i know and um and and then the next thing is they're having fewer kids now that gives a simple mathematical reality that there are fewer taxpayers and more people living longer retiring. And just about every country you can want to compare yourself with, Australia, Germany, Britain, uh, America, Taiwan, Israel, Spain, Italy, Ireland, all of those countries and more are in the course of gradually raising their age of entitlement to superannuation. So if I look at someone, you, you just told me that you're 58, mm. uh, that means that at present uh, you'd be uh, entitled to receive national super in 2030. Um, what Act would do is change it so that you would be entitled at some point in 2031. But over that period of time, over that eight years, um, we would save something less like $12 billion that can be used to retire debt. Now, I know there'll be people who say, oh, I'm out, I'm, you know, it's my, I've worked for it, it's my entitlement and so on. Uh, and I, I get that, but I'd also just say that, you know, if we want to keep a young generation around, they've got to have a growing economy with competitive tax rates. Uh, and that means that, you know, if every other country is making this adjustment, any politician who comes on here and says, no, no, New Zealand's different, maths doesn't apply to us or, or whatever, I, I think they're lying to you. And I think what will happen is that sooner or later, there'll be some sort of crash or crunch and they'll end up making the adjustment all of a sudden and it won't and it won't be pretty. I just re-emphasise, if, if you're already retired, this doesn't affect you. No. If you're near retirement, it barely reflects, uh, affects you. If you're much younger, uh, then making this thing sustainable is, is in your interest and having honesty and being prepared to do it now is much better than dishonesty and doing it as a surprise 10 or 20 years down the track. And to be perfectly honest, the young have borne the brunt of the COVID lockdowns and the COVID response. Response, mm. And I don't have a problem at all with doing our bit to help the young people because I haven't seen, a, I mean, when you look at the kids that have missed out on two years of schooling, I, two years of socialisation, two years of, 
it just well I mean only in some parts of New Zealand but it just yeah, and this is why we say, uh, you know, if we're in government, we would amend the terms of reference for the Royal Commission to include the impacts on mental health and education and the economy and ask whether the rule of law was complied with. Because basically the Labour Party, I think, got obsessed with just one thing, which is ironic, because when they came in, they said, we're going to do well-being economics, we're not going to focus on just GDP, we'll focus on more than one thing. One thing came along in the form of COVID, and they threw out social cohesion, education, mental health, all of the things that you would think a Labour Party would care about. And what's more, it's more vulnerable people uh, who ended up bearing the brunt of yeah. it. You know, yeah. lockdown wasn't so bad if you're in a five-bedroom mansion. Um, in fact, I've heard from people who say they thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, if you're living in a garage through the winter uh, with five kids instead of five bedrooms, then it's a little bit tougher. And I'm always astonished at how a Labour Party was prepared to be so unkind and uncaring uh, for precisely the people I thought they were here for. News Talk ZB, let's be hearing from you. 0800 80 10 80 is the number to call. 1024. Join the fight against prostate cancer with Storage King this September. With every extra large packing carton and carrying carton sold, Storage King will donate $1 to Blue September. Storageking.co.nz. The kings of storage, moving and more. Harvey Furnishing's massive spring sale has begun. It's out with the old and in with the new. With up to 50% off ready-made curtains, cushions, throws and more. Visit us in store or shop online at harveyfurnishings.co.nz. Harvey Furnishing's homes made beautiful. Asia, it's so hot right now. If it's time to escape your winter blues, book your Asian escape right now for less with Air Asia X. They've got flights from Auckland to Sydney, Kuala Lumpur, and beyond with over 130 destinations in Asia. Treat yourself to their premium flatbeds, then you can fly flat, sit back, and relax. Just another reason to fly with the award winning best low cost carrier that is Air Asia X. Download the Air Asia app today to get the best deals on flights or go to airasia.com. T's and C's apply. Your kitchen, your sanctuary, your Miele outlet. Doing up your kitchen this spring? Come in and see the fabulous range at Miele. Grab those spring specials and tackle those indoor projects. Make jaws drop. Update your kitchen, make a change this spring. With huge savings off run-out products and stock arriving daily, your Miele outlet store, 880 Great South Road, Penrose, steelfort.co.nz. Your kitchen, your choice, your Miele for less. Start your spring cleaning with new Mold Wizard. It removes mold from outdoor furniture. Mold Wizard removes mold from canvas awnings. Mold Wizard removes mold from tents and umbrellas. You just spray and you'll slay all mold on all outdoor surfaces. Shop online now for Mold Wizard and for a limited time you'll receive a 2 litre pack for just $59.99 plus delivery. Start your spring cleaning now with Mold Wizard. Available only online. Visit goodhomeproducts.co.nz Make HR easy with MyHR. Streamline hiring and performance with paperless onboarding and custom OKRs. Mm. Centralized workforce data in the cloud and benchmark it against industry insights. Oh. Manage leave, payroll and payments. Ah. Plus get customized documents and expert HR support for any employment issue. Woohoo! MyHR, the HR and payroll platform for Kiwi SME. Search myhr.works for more. Streaming live on iHeartRadio. Kerry Wood and Mornings. Engaging conversation on News Talk ZB. News Talk ZB 1026. Uh, retirement never understood why people are allowed to double dip. People working and receiving the pension, says Neil. Do you think that's fair enough? I guess there's always people who say, look, you know, we, we need going to means test it. I, I don't think that's a good idea because it's effectively saying um, if you work, we won't just tax the income you get, but we'll start abating your pension away. So it's it's effectively like an even bigger tax on work. And I don't see why, you know, we should be putting even more taxes on people who work and try and make a difference. I mean, if there's one thing about this Labour government over the last six years, and to some extent previous governments, it's that we don't celebrate business as a force for good. We don't celebrate success. There's always the thought that someone somewhere has done a little bit too well and all we need is another review, another tax, another regulation to cut them down to size. And I don't think that's a vision for New Zealand that we can get behind because it's not sustainable. Peter has a question about tax. Good morning to you, Peter. Yeah, good morning. So for those of us that hold down more than one job, how about scrapping secondary income tax? 
So, you know, we're going out there doing the hard yards and we just keep getting belted around the ears for it. But yeah, doesn't it all come out in the wash? Well, I, I think but I think what Peter's getting at is that we have a system where, you know, if you earn a bit of money, then you pay ten and a half. If you earn a bit more, you pay seventeen and a half. Uh, you get up to forty-eight grand, you're on thirty, and you get up to seventy grand, you're on thirty-three. You get one hundred and eighty grand, that's a charge of thirty-nine. Every time you make a little bit of extra effort in New Zealand, they whack you a bit harder. And you know, I hear what we tell kids in this country, or should tell kids, is. Go to school, listen to your teacher, do your homework, get good grades, turn them into qualifications, get a job, turn that into a career, save some money, invest it carefully. If you, if you do that right, kid, then things are going to work out okay for you. Long comes the IRD and says, no, 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 no. <laughs> the better you do, the harder we'll whack you. And that's why X Alternative Budget proposes lower, flatter tax rates. Currently there's five tax rates. We'd get that down to three and ultimately down to just two tax rates. We think that that would be um, a much better future for New Zealand because ultimately our tax uh, code is, is kind of contains a bit of tall poppy syndrome and um, we're actually aspirational for New Zealand. We want to make this a first world nation in an island paradise, not a place where people are trying to drag each other down more than push them up. So you'd scrap the secondary tax? Effectively, yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, people will say, look, it's been fixed, it all comes out in the wash, but the truth is you earn more money, you pay higher tax rates, and we think you should you know, pay more tax, but not a higher rate, because that's just double-whacking people. OK, if we can do this in a couple of minutes. Nathan, good morning. Yes, good morning. Um, question for David. Um, Two I minutes. Have a, um, <laughs> if I have an issue with the credibility of most of our the parties at the moment about whether I can believe that they'll deliver, they'll deliver what they say. Um, I guess my key question for you is, what, why should we believe ACT will deliver what it says? Well, it's a, it's a fair question. I think a lot of people are disillusioned uh, with government. A couple of things is we've, we've got a pretty good track record on that. I mean, I've served um, my local community as the local MP for coming up nine years now. I hope that, that the Epsom electorate will re-elect me. Certainly I've got a bigger vote and a bigger majority each time because uh, I've made it a point of pride to be a good local MP, answer the phone and help people uh, whenever I can. At a more national level as, as leader of ACT, uh, you know, we've taken in uh, one person and then all of a sudden nine extras to have a caucus of ten and it's fair to say all the <laughs> political pundits have been furious because they've been waiting to write us off uh, and we've always uh, done what we've said so well, far. We've done a pretty good job of not imploding because leaders of other parties haven't been able to manage a sudden yeah. increase in their caucus. Yeah and, and so you ask yourself you know how do we get those people to do that and be motivated it's because you know we've got a one pager on every ACT MP's desk that says our job is to be representatives, hear people's concerns and hopes, propose better ideas and take the country forward according to our values that are about limited government and the simple idea you can make a difference in your own life. You're responsible for what you do wrong but you're rewarded for what you do right. So once you've got those values in place it's easier to know where your, your North Star is. And I just look at stuff well, like okay. um, you know, assisted dying euthanasia. I mean I'd, I'd like to think that record speaks for itself but other people will obviously judge. Nathan does that answer your question? Um, yeah, it does. Uh, do I have time for another quick supplementary? <laughs> uh, no. But, um... Uh Okay. Yes, no, actually ask the question and then perhaps David can answer it. Uh, da da have, David will promise a shorter answer is the real thing. No. <laughs> and then David will hold for the news headlines and then David will answer it. So what's the question, Nathan? Uh, how would you describe your leadership style? Sure okay, thing. and David Seymour, Act Party leader, will describe his leadership style after the news, 10.31. News Talk ZB Auckland. Time saver. 10% finance is available on new Renault vans. Good morning. Now we've got a crash in New Windsor, Tiverton Road at Whitney Street. If you can update us, 0800 jammed. The Southern Motorway flowing relatively well. No delays on the northern, northwestern, or the southwestern. No deposit either. Lending criteria, T's and C's apply. Renault.co.nz. Ivanka Zonich for Time Saver Traffic. Booster has supported more than 30 Kiwi tech startups in their journey from idea to reality. You can join Booster and back the next generation of innovators. Invest today via the NZX or at booster.co.nz. Early stage company investing is generally considered to be high risk and it's recommended you seek financial advice if you're unsure whether this investment is suitable for you. Booster Investment Management Limited is the issuer of the Booster Innovation Fund. The product disclosure statement is available at booster.co.nz. 
Ryman Healthcare's village communities give you the freedom to remain active, pursue your passions and create new friendships. Live independently and enjoy the Ryman lifestyle with the reassurance of assisted living in a service department, rest home and in most villages, hospital and dementia care on site. With 11 villages in Auckland, find the one that's right for you and experience how their villages are the measure of retirement living. Search Ryman Auckland. Hi folks, David Seymour here. When you vote at this election, forget the politicians' promises. Instead, think of the waste we are saddling our kids with. Think of the businesses ruined by crime. And think of the need to end the division of our country by race. It is not enough to change from red to blue. To ensure that your next Government of New Zealand is one of real change, stand with me and Party Vote Act. Authorised by D. Smith, 27 Gillies Avenue, Auckland 1023. Hi, Tony Street here. It's time to try Coast. Feel good. Billy Joel, Tina, Michael, The Eurythmics. Coast plays the most feel good 80s. Auckland's 98.2. Coast FM. Hi, Mike Forburn, ECC. Our showroom proudly houses the world's most celebrated furniture, lighting and homeware designs. Browse our collection online at ecc.co.nz or come in and explore at ECC 39 Nugent Street, Grafton. News Talk ZB Headlines. With Blue Bubble Taxis, it's no trouble with a blue bubble. UFC superstar Israel Adesanya has pleaded guilty to drink driving. Court documents show he was charged with driving in Auckland Central seven milligrams over the limit. While Winston Peters' name is being thrown around as a possible coalition partner, one thing's certain, National Leader Chris Luxon has this morning finally confirmed he's willing to work with the party in a potential post-election deal. And Axe David Seymour says he's willing to work with Peters as a last resort. But both Luxon and Seymour agree they're gunning for a National Act coalition. A warning, wild weather could impact Cook Strait ferry sailings tomorrow and Wednesday. A Met Service strong wind watch comes into force tonight from Marlborough through to Wellington. The National Road Carriers Association is calling Nationals' road speed promises a return to common sense. If elected, National intends to lift the speed limit on a number of roads that would drop to 80 and many local roads to 50. Airfare Wars, a new carrier, puts more capacity on popular US route. Find out more on that story at NZ Herald Premium. Back to Kerry Woodham. Thank you very much, Malcolm. It is 24 minutes to 11. Uh, Josh, good morning to you. Hi, yeah, Josh. Morning, Kerry. Morning, Kerry. morning, Seymour. Hey, um, listen, um, we've all heard um, everyone's I reckons about co-governance. Now, um, I've heard Seymour, I've heard you talk about things from a English perspective. Uh, it sounds like you were quoting the English version of the treaty. Have you read the Maori version, mate? Yes, I have. Uh, let me just come back to the guy from before the ad break. I oh, promised yes, I'd leadership. say what my Sorry, leadership Josh. style that is. Like my I'm, fault. I, I probably I haven't read all the management books to, to have the right term, but I mean my leadership style is ultimately it goes back to when I played or coached rugby or played and coached rugby uh, back in the day. What I found is if you created an environment where people felt like they were valued, like they could make a difference, um, and that you know they were perhaps the star if they did the right thing. Um, um, what I found was that some of the players I had, many of whom were a long way from becoming all blacks on the talent scale, uh, nonetheless did the most amazing things on the field because we created the right environment. So uh, I just try and create a place where people feel valued, feel like they're doing a good job, um, and uh, you, you sometimes surprise yourself with what people will do going above and beyond just because you've created a space where they can feel good. So I don't know if that's a leadership style, but that's how I try yeah. to do it. No, that sounds um, like a leadership with our, style. Our different teams. Yep. Look, as Sorry, far as Josh, as far as, yeah, yeah, so that's okay. So as far as as far as the treaty, um, I don't know if uh, if you sir were, were listening half an hour ago or so when I was um, talking about the treaty, but I, I actually quoted uh, the Maori version, Nati Kanga Katoa Rite Tahi, uh, the same rights and duties, and it goes on to say as citizens of England. So I am quoting the Maori version. I'm actually pro treaty. I think the treaty uh, is a wonderful document. However, the way that it has been interpreted by the judiciary 
judiciary, by the Waitangi Tribunal, by the academics, by the public service, and not the public and not Parliament has twisted it into a document of division rather than unity. The ACT Party's proposal is that the next Parliament should debate what these principles are and then put them up uh, for referendum and let people have an honest, healthy debate about what our country's constitutional foundations are. And I think what you'd find is that people actually want uh, to live in a country where you have one five millionth of the opportunity it has to offer. Whether you've been here for 50 generations or one, you have the same rights and duties. Now, you'll notice I said one five millionth of the opportunity. So a lot of people aren't getting that. There's a lot of areas, education, housing, welfare, we've we'll got to do much better. we education in yeah. a moment. Uh, News Talk ZB, it is 21 minutes to 11. Uh, back with David Seymour, ACT Party leader, in just a moment. G'day, Leanne here, Manuko Toyota Group Let's Talk Hybrid CHR. Now, if you don't want to stand out from the crowd, this compact crossover, probably not for you. But if you're looking for a great little SUV that's easy to drive, easy on the eye and easy on the wallet, consider the Hybrid CHR. They're on the ground now from only 41290 Toyota Driveway. Hybrid CHR at Manuko Toyota Group, New Zealand's largest Toyota dealership in Botany, Manuko, Papakura and Pukekoe. Come on in. Take a break from cooking because now you can jump online and order delicious heat and eat meals. The team at Eat create new menus every week. You just order the number of heat and eat meals you want by 11am and they're delivered to your door the next day. With no contracts or subscriptions, everyone's switching to delicious heat and eat meals delivered by Eat. See this week's new menu at eat.co.nz. Eat. Just a scenic three and a half hours drive from Christchurch, Punakaiki is an unforgettable experience. Unwind with stunning food paired with magical sunsets as you feel a world away. Punakaiki is the perfect base for the popular Paparoa track and an ideal getaway for the whole family, including your furry friends. Close to nature, far from ordinary. Book your Punakaiki adventure today with scenichotelgroup.co.nz. Make magical memories at Rainbow's End these holidays. From the gentle thrills of the log flume to big thrills on the Stratosphere 360. Daytime playtime or evening fun with twilight rides. Don't miss the magic. Book now. Rainbowsend.co.nz Rainbow's End. I'm here to clear the air. A heat pump isn't home ventilation, but a quality DVS system? Yes, that's home ventilation. Visit dvs.co.nz D- Start your spring cleaning with new Mold Wizard. It removes mold from outdoor furniture. Mold Wizard removes mold from canvas awnings. Mold Wizard removes mold from tents and umbrellas. You just spray and you'll slay all mold on all outdoor surfaces. Shop online now for Mold Wizard and for a limited time you'll receive a 2 litre pack for just $59.99 plus delivery. Start your spring cleaning now with Mold Wizard. Available only online. Visit goodhomeproducts.co.nz. David Seymour on Kerry Woodham Mornings with PinnacleLife.co.nz. Easy online life insurance. News Talk ZB, your home for election 2023. Okay, so education, we, we said we were going to talk about that. You have put out some policy releases this morning. It's a big job. Where do you start with education? Well, first of all, you've got to recognise that there's probably nothing more, in fact, there is nothing more important in New Zealand today than how many kids go to school yeah. and how much they're taught and what they're taught because in 30 years' time, an educated population will be able to deal with geopolitics or climate change or an ageing population or, or other challenges we don't even know about yet. An uneducated population can squander centuries of build-up to have a great country and, and let it all go. So how much knowledge we transfer from one generation to the next, that is key. Uh, at the moment, it's going wrong. Objectively, this is not political. Mm. Uh, the number of kids attending school is at an all time low. Uh, the amount of learning that is going on has mm. been in free fall since measurements began yeah. around the time of the year 2000. We are transferring less knowledge from one generation to the next, and that is not good for us. What's the basic diagnosis is that the government does not focus on measuring the outcomes. 
they don't even know they'll never know how many kids go to school today because many schools just refuse to report attendance and the Ministry of Education said oh that's okay um, next issue is the curriculum has been politicised and dumbed down and they're not measuring the achievements so what are we going to, to do about that well number one just get really tough on measuring the outcomes how many kids showed up what did they learn and then Secondly, stop micromanaging, stop the modern learning environments, the child-centred oh, yeah. education, the, the crazy politicisation where somehow you know your adherence to the Treaty of Waitangi is more important than reading, writing and arithmetic. Well, not for that kid as a, as a citizen of the world that is going to have a bigger demand on skills than any century to date. Uh, so you, you get rid of the politicisation and the, the policy that most embodied that uh, was actually charter schools. What charter schools did was they said, look, here's your money, here's your contract, get these results or you're gone, but we will give you the flexibility to do it. And they did things like, you know, one school hired Filippo Levy as a community liaison officer, the former Highlanders lock. If he didn't show up to school, pretty decent chance Filippo would come around and then you went to school. And everyone laughs at that, but he's actually a gentle giant. Yeah. It showed the kind of innovation that's possible if you treat educators with respect. And ultimately, it's actually an old left dream. It's what the old Labour Party used to believe that any kid, no matter where they're born in the country, no matter how disadvantaged, has a shot yes. at maybe being at a top university or going to medical school. If they've got the chops to do it, the pathway should be there. We're failing people at the moment. Labour is failing its own mission, and the ACT Party is very happy to take on that mantle because it's more important than anything else we'll discuss today. I agree. Uh, Johnny, uh, well, another one that's dominated talkback is the topic of the gangs. Johnny, you have a question about that? Yes, good morning, Kerry. Hi, morning. David. Hi, my, my question is, David, uh, what will ACT do to remove the gangs from state housing, the violent offenders who are dealing drugs to our people? Uh, well, it's it's pretty straightforward. We believe, or we know that there is, you know, a twenty five thousand odd waiting list for state housing. Uh, there simply is not enough. Now, first of all, you have to accept that somebody is missing out on public housing. There is nothing we can do to solve that rapidly because it takes time for homes to be built. Um, however, uh, if there's going to be someone missing out, it shouldn't be some poor family languishing on the waiting list trying to get somewhere to live. It shouldn't be the people uh, who have violent offenders next door making their life hard, making it hard for their kids uh, to get up, pack their lunch, go to school and have a future. So we would say, look, there's actually going to be behavioural requirements and this whole policy Labor have put in place, which is basically designed to protect uh, people who are misbehaving rather than their neighbours, be they social housing neighbours or nearby private neighbours, that policy's got to go. That's, that's it's ultimately thing, about values. Yeah, simple that's idea, the thing that gets me because... You ask them, you say, okay, it's a novel idea. You say, we're just going to love bomb you until you're a good person. We're going to keep you in that house even though you're behaving egregiously. Does it work? Nobody knows. They don't know. I mean, if, if it worked and they could show me stats to show that kids were going to school more and people were coming off drugs and going into jobs, they haven't got the stats to tell me if it works. I think the problem is you've had um, a kind of what I call the lanyard class, the people with the lanyards uh, around their neck who populate central Wellington and the truth is that they have never been to a tough neighbourhood. They went to a nice school, a nice university, and then they got a job uh, behind a nice desk with a new laptop. And my view, uh, what we need is a little bit of reality. I mean, I, I grew up in Whangarei. I went to a decile one intermediate, and I know how tough life can be for some kids. Um, but once you accept that, then you start saying, okay, what can we do about it? Okay. And that is instill the right values. You can make a difference in your own life. Uh, if you act well, then you will be in a good place. If you act poorly, um, then you will go down the queue for that social housing because Labor's whole approach, be kind to criminals until they're kind back, let people out of jail, give mm -hmm. people a home for life regardless of behaviour. Well, actually, people aren't stupid. They've taken advantage of it. Yes, they and have. the people who have actually made an honest fist of life, uh, they are being disillusioned and having the joy drained from life or their goodwill has been drained from New Zealand as they find other places to make a go of it, like such as Australia. Mark, a question, a coalition question. Hello, Mark. Um, oh, yeah, it's sort of, yeah, yeah, it's sort of more to do with the economy. Um, Nicola Willis and Christopher Luxon say it's all about the economy, but every time I hear Nicola Willis um, try and answer or not answer any questions about the, the economy, none of, it, none of her figures add up, and I mean... 
their plan to me is just completely inflationary. Um, my question to David is that this person is going to be the Minister of Finance. Do you think her answers at the moment to do with her tax plan are credible? I know you've changed your numbers around your tax plan, but they haven't changed any since, since the preview. So, I mean, to me, they don't know anything about the economy, and the answers that they're giving you wouldn't accept from a first-year economic student in high school, let alone university. What do you think about that, David? Well, all, I don't want to get into you know judging them. All I'd say is that ACT is the only party that consistently puts out a fully costed alternative budget. Mm -hmm. Every time Treasury publishes new numbers, we update our alternative budget, and we're totally straight with you. Grant Robertson has left the cupboard bare, and it's going to be a tough time to get quality public services, repay debts, and give some relief on people who have been paying far too much tax lately. I uh, just point to, for example, the three three-storey houses. Uh, issue, you know, that was a, a Nicola Willis special, that was absolutely her idea uh, jumped into bed with Labour to allow three three storey houses on any section Act said no from the get go it's not going to work, it won't get more houses built, it will annoy people and Labour, ha sorry National have, have walked that back two years later after they saw that it was bad politics, bad process okay. and bad policy, I think that is an, another example of the role Act can play, whether it's finance housing or any other housing any other policy area. That's why you need Act in a future okay. government. Uh, yes or no, do you support live animal exports? Yes, I do. Okay. And you have David taking one hour out of his busy schedule, Kerry. Yeah. ZB doesn't even have the decency to dial back their never-ending ads. He's only on air for 22 minutes of that hour. It's a bloody disgrace. Says John. David, can I ask, will you fund Newstalk ZB so we never ever have to go to the commercial markets again? <laughs> if it means you end up like RNZ, definitely not. <laughs> um, look, we're commercial people. Those businesses uh, have a right to advertise. And yeah. whenever I go to another city, I always turn on the radio and, and see what are people advertising? What are people buying? I, I think business is a force for good. But can I just come back on that um, animal export? I know that a lot of people are outraged by it. Can I just make a couple of points? Very quickly. Yep. Okay. One is that since uh, we have had a ban in New Zealand, the same customers are now going to Chile yep. to get the same cows or very similar cows, and I suspect they'll have worse standards. Uh, you know, those cows actually have a better survival rate on the ships than on New Zealand farms. They actually gain weight uh, while they're on the ships, and I know that one ship sunk, but actually, if people stop going on ships because they sunk, New Zealand wouldn't be here. Um, so, you know, I think we've got to be a little bit realistic about $500 million of export revenue. Uh, do we want to give that up as a country when the alternative is the same thing carries on happening with the Chileans who probably have worse standards than us? Okay. Oh, can we do two minutes? Can we try? I've got to, uh, why are we trying to quash debt? Some debt is good, like for using to build infrastructure. We sorely need a. Is there, have you got a table of, of where you're going to start? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, we're pretty upfront about how we'd reduce debt. I just make the point that um, New Zealand is a frontier society. We have earthquakes, we have pandemics, we have all sorts of shocks. We just had flooding uh, earlier this year. The government needs to keep a healthy balance sheet. That is our ultimate insurance policy here in New Zealand. And when you have Grant Robertson spending up the wazoo, even when there's no disasters, even after the pandemic, even besides the floods, uh, that's when you know that you're eroding your cushion. The other point I'd make is, yes, we need more infrastructure, but ACT makes the point that there are people all over the world retiring with huge pension funds looking for places to park their money. We say the government should set out a plan for each region, say these are the roads and the infrastructure that we need, this is what the government can currently afford with its balance sheet, and then invite local and international investors, I'm a bit wary of China, but local and international investors, uh, and say, look, you know, if you want to build this, toll it, and if the local community votes for it to go ahead, then let's get it built, because I'd rather have a toll road I can use now um, than uh, a, a non-toll road uh, in two generations' time. I mean, you look at the second harbour crossing in Auckland, I mean, there's, there's almost a whole generation of people that have been born, <laughs> lived great lives and died while we're waiting to get yeah. a second harbour crossing. Uh, we need better ways of funding and financing infrastructure, and I think public-private partnerships and tolls properly managed and democratically ratified um, are where the world is going and where New Zealand can't afford to be left behind. News Talk ZB, it is seven minutes to 11. Need a better solution for your space? Talk to the good sorts at Wardrobe Warehouse. They'll sort you out with a wardrobe that gives you all the space you need. 
go to wardrobewarehouse.co.nz. They know their shut-off valves from standpipes and S-traps from P-traps. They know their RCDs from RCBOs and ohms from vaults. Laser, the tradies builders use. Totally dependable, plumbing and electrical. 0800, get laser. Let your sense of adventure bloom this spring at Sky City with 10 awesome Suzuki Jimneys to be won. Each Wednesday at 9pm until November 8th, somebody will drive away in a Suzuki Jimny worth over $39,000. To find out how you could be in to win, go to skycity.co.nz forward slash Jimny. Sky City. Adventure starts here. R20. Game responsibly. At JMI Wealth, we work to grow our clients' wealth with investment portfolios that stand the test of time. Hi, I'm Andrew Callagher, JMI Wealth Director. For more than 30 years, we focused on building generational wealth, allowing our clients to pass on the nest eggs they've worked so hard to create. So if you want to secure your lifestyle and provide for the next generation, talk to us about getting the most from your money. Call us or visit jmiwealth.co.nz. JMI Wealth, investing for generations. Over 60 and get urinary tract infections? Optimal Clinical Trials are researching a potential treatment for bloodstream infections caused by E. coli bacteria and are looking for people with a history of UTIs to take part. To learn more, visit OptimalClinicalTrials.com or call 0800 737 327. You got much, you got more. Everything around the house looks a little too old. Remove it all, wet and forget. The original Kiwi made wet and forget one product, any surface. 21 stores nationwide. Visit goodhomeproducts.co.nz and watch the online video that's gone viral. It's about a new DIY product called Curtain Wizard. It's designed to make it easy for you to remove mould from your curtains, blinds and drapes. With Curtain Wizard, you don't take your curtains down. You simply spray and the mould will go away. Shop online now for Curtain Wizard and for a limited time get a 2 litre pack for just $59.99 plus delivery. Visit goodhomeproducts.co.nz Right then, given that it's your hour, you can have the last word. We've got two minutes and we're going to play your song. Nothing from your Dancing with the Stars. Wasn't that terrifying? Uh, for me or the audience? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, that is the hardest thing I think I've done in terms... I'd rather do a marathon than do that again. Uh, well, fellow survivor, it's good to be here. <laughs> <laughs> so, vote, party vote act because... You want not just to change the government, but make it real change. You know, we've got some challenges to overcome, and we can, but it won't be enough just to swap one Chris for another and red for blue. We need more than a change of management. We need a change of direction, and that's got to be based on some honesty and some ideas. I think ACT brings those to the table, and, you know, your party vote for ACT can wind up the volume on the number of ACT voices around that table. Just like it sounds like you're winding up the, the volume on money for nothing, which, uh, just, just by the way... Under- yeah, 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 well, that's the. That's Why the did you, this uh, was, you always get asked whenever we have a guest, they always get asked to choose a song. <laughs> Helen said, What would you well, like? And you said. It's one of my favourite songs, one of the first songs I learned on guitar. And um, <laughs> it's also uh, my dedication to Grant Robertson. Um, I think he'll be remembered as one of the worst finance ministers. And there certainly won't be any money for nothing if we are put into government. Uh, we're going to have to work very hard to turn this ship around. But in spite of all that, I love this country. I have great hope. And I'm really looking forward uh, to asking people at the end to give their party vote to act. Trust us with your vote and uh, we won't let you down. We will actually make sure that this country it reaches its potential as a first world nation in an island paradise which we should always be. David Seymour, uh, act party leader, thank you very much for your time. Let's take it away. Money for nothing and chicks for free. I think the chicks will be quite safe. <laughs> oh, thanks, Dave. Bunnings is here to help you unleash your inner green thumb this spring so you can grow your own. Start growing with a Saxon 4 tiered greenhouse for just $44.10 or set a customised watering schedule with a Holman automatic tap timer for $144.56.